everybody, it's Ian the Off Kilter Crafter. I hope you're having a great day today. Today we're going to be making this card, which I feel like is probably one of the best cards I've made thus far in my YouTube career. I really love how it came out and I love the technique, so let's stop chatting and let's get started putting it together. Today I'm going to be starting off with this Simon Says Stamp stamp set. It is One Cool Pineapple. This is a brand new stamp set, I believe, from them. It came out in their card kit uh, for, I think it was for July, and it has a lot of great summer objects. So it's got a pineapple, a fish, a sun, a flamingo, a watermelon, and a cactus, and then it says things like, you, you're one cool pineapple, fishing you a happy birthday, you bring the sunshine, be a flamingo and a flock of pigeons, stuck on you, which I think is super cute with the uh, little cactus right there, and you're one in a melon. Love that one. So, lots of fun, and I'm going to be using uh, the, uh, I almost said watermelon, that is not a water watermelon, that is a pineapple. I'm going to be using the pineapple stamp today. I'm also going to be using two colors of Distress Oxides. I'm going to be using Fossilized Amber and Lucky Clover. I have a piece of Canson XL watercolor paper here. And basically what I'm going to be doing... Ooh, this is really stuck together. I'm going to be using my pineapple image. I'm going to put it on an acrylic block. And then I'm going to stamp it with some Versamark ink, which is a clear sticky ink. It's great for doing heat embossing with, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. By the way, I've said this a million times, but just in case you're new to my channel or new to stamping, make sure to condition your stamps by just putting your, tapping your hands on it, running your hands on it, running it up your arm, stuff like that. It helps to keep the ink from beating up in one area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, um, first of all, I'm going to clear up my area a little bit. And I'm going to take my Versamark ink pad. Your Versamark ink pad will get dirty. It's okay. It happens. In fact, mine looks like it has just, it's gone through the ringer. Uh, that's perfectly fine. It's no big deal. Uh, these pads, you know, unless you're doing some like really crazy stamping where you like have to have that clear color, it's not a big deal. So basically what I'm going to do, and you're not going to be able to see it, I can barely see it myself, uh, I'm just going to randomly take this image and put it across the page, and I'm going to go upside down, I'm going to be all over the place, but basically I just want to fill in as much as possible across the um, card panel here, so I am going to be kind of looking in the light to make sure that I get this get these pineapples in the right spot and not overlapping. Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you, I didn't um, stamp it correctly and they were actually overlapping each other. And it could work out, but for the idea that I have in my head, I don't want them overlapping. I want them to be separated. So I went ahead and started a new panel. This time I'm gonna be using my heat emboss powder to show me where these are so that way I don't overlap the images and cause a big mess not a big deal and it should be fairly easy from this point forward to make sure that I don't do that again but we'll see Alright, now that I've done all the uh, stamping and put all the heat embossed powder on it, it is now time to heat emboss. You can actually see it there. Um, I have not heated any of the embossing powder, so let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so now that I have my panel all heat embossed, and I don't know if it's going to show up on camera at all now. Yeah, it's really hard to see, but I'm going to take my water brush and I'm going to start filling in the um, pineapples with some water. This is just clean water. And I think I'm gonna wanna start with the actual pineapples themselves. So I'm gonna go in and fill, oops, my water brush has 
some color on it still. I need to clean that off. Hopefully I didn't just do too much damage. All right, there we go. So I'm going to squeeze a little bit and get some water going and I'm gonna fill in and it's gonna go over the edges here. I'm not gonna be perfect with it. I'm adding a lot of water. Like I said, this is watercolor paper so it can handle the water and it's not a big deal. I'm just getting all sorts of colors popping up on my water brush today. Luckily enough, that color is yellow, so that's not a huge problem because the pineapple will be yellow. So I have my color, or I, I have water on my page, and now I'm going to take some of the Distress Oxide and my water brush, and I'm just going to pick some of it up. I'm not going to use a lot of it. I'm actually going to dilute it a little bit by squeezing and it's gonna put it in pretty intense, but as I'm mixing it with the water, it's gonna lighten up. Okay, now that I've done the first layer, I just wanted to get some color on there and add some like watercolor shapes to it. Um, so I did a lot of water and now I'm going to actually take um, and clean off the brush. I'm gonna actually run some of the water through the nozzle here. And I am now going to put more intense color on top of what I've just done. Um, so that way we get a really, really bright yellow color coming off of the pineapples. I'm not going to use much water at all. This is going to be just basically pure color that I'm putting straight onto the pineapples. So the first time I was using a little water, or excuse me, a lot of water with a little color and now I'm switching it back the other direction so that there's a lot of color and less water. Okay, now that I've done that with the yellow, I'm now gonna switch over to Lucky Clover and do that with the green. Same idea, I'm gonna start off with lots of water, little color, and then switch to little water, lots of color. All right, now that I have that drying and it's ready to uh, move on to the next part, I'm gonna take the Sentiment Year One Cool Pineapple 
and I'm gonna stamp it on. I feel like this is like pretty similar to pineapple colored paper, um, as close as I'm gonna get it tonight at least. And uh, so we'll stamp that. And I think I'm going to use some VersaFine ink. This is my favorite one to use and I always forget to not use it with Copics because you can't use it's not Copic friendly, so we're just gonna stamp it really quickly. I would drag out the Tim Holtz stamp press, but I don't, or stamp platform, I should say, but I don't think I really need it for this. This is just gonna be a quick one and done type situation, at least I hope it is. Yep, perfect, just like that. And so I'll clean off the stamp, and then I'm gonna use my Simon Says Stamp um, Circle Dies, Stitch Circle Dies, I can't say that very quickly. Um, and I have the perfect size for it, which will just, I think that'll center it quite nicely. So I'll go ahead and die, that, die cut that using my uh, Cricut Cuddlebug, I almost said Cricut Maker, can't do that yet. Um, using my Cricut Cuddlebug, and uh, then we'll attach it onto the card. Okay, it's time to bring this whole card together. I have some uh, Nina Solar White 110 pound cardstock. That's what I always use for my card panels. And uh, I'm gonna use some Tombow Extreme adhesive. I'm using the Tombow Extreme because I want the watercolor paper since it's kind of warped a little bit uh, due to the heat and moisture and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and tape it down and make sure that it's really attached onto the surface of my card. So that's why I'm using this thick adhesive. And then I'm also gonna be popping up that circle. You know, guys, when I first started crafting, I was very much against using foam adhesive or popping things up on cards and stuff like that. But the more I do it, the more I'm finding reasons to do it, which is kind of weird. Um, I need to just break down, and Simon Says Stamp has one of those ginormous rolls of foam adhesive, and I really just need to break down and buy it. I just haven't, I haven't wanted to, to be honest. I'm like, I, I don't, it's, first of all, it's expensive, so it's really expensive to have, and I just um, smeared a little bit of the green, but that's okay, because actually that's in the center, and it's going to get covered up, so not a big deal. Um, but... Anyways, as I was saying, I, I've just been very reluctant to to get it, and I don't I don't know why, other than the expense factor. So, anyways, all right. So I'm gonna use this is all of the foam adhesive that I have. So unfortunately, uh, this thing is not gonna get good coverage on it. I don't feel like, but it's at least going to get some. And uh, hopefully, if I do end up sending this one through the mail, it ends up at its location. Okay. All right, there we go. Wow, oh, I actually really like this card a lot. Um, wow, okay, I'm slightly impressed with myself this time. So I'm gonna be honest with you guys, most of the time when I create cards, I feel um, inadequate uh, when it comes to card crafting. I look at some of the other card crafters out on YouTube, out on Instagram, out in many different places, and I feel very inadequate with what I do and what I'm making because I, I definitely don't have the level of polish that they do. It, you know, I talk about wanting to be, have perfection and that it's okay not to be perfect and all that, but let's be honest, everybody wants to have that perfect card. And I feel like with this one, I made a pretty close to perfect card. I'm really loving this. The technique was fun. Going outside the lines to do the watercolor was a lot of fun. I think this is a great technique if you're looking for kind of a messy, but maybe a little bit neat to it. I don't know. It's, it's really, really a fun technique that I would highly recommend you try out. And this is one of the cards that I'm very much in love with. I hope you liked putting this card together, and if you did, make sure to hit that thumbs up button down below and let YouTube know that you liked my video, and then hopefully YouTube will then share it across YouTube land. Also, if you're not already, hit that button down below that says subscribe. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and get great updates every time I post a new video or go live. 
by clicking that bell icon. That's the that's YouTube's way of letting you know when your favorite creators go live or post videos, so make sure to get those notifications, and who knows, YouTube will probably change it next week. You can also check out my other social media links down in the description below. Make sure to go check out my Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and more. And always, you can get social with me down in the comments or on my social media. I hope everybody has a great day, and remember guys, normal is just a setting on the dryer. Bye!